It's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm building some garden boxes today. And I've done videos on how to do this before, but I'm using a different technique here. So, uh, you know, over the years you, you evolve and you, you see design flaws and you correct them to get better results. So that's what I'm doing here. So the great thing about this is that if you have two 12 footers, um, you can cut them into eight and, eight and four, right? An eight foot length and a four foot length and make an eight by four box. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So I'm just gonna use some basic tools here, handsaw, you know, uh, square, and uh, cut these down. So well, let's get started. a little irate with a lot of content on YouTube when people are doing stuff like this because they leave you with the impression that you need a lot of gear to uh, to do this kind of work and you really don't I mean a couple clams are nice right um, but I mean we're not doing fine kitchen cabinetry, right? This is a wooden box for a garden. I mean, I see people selling these things all the time. They're not hard to make. Now you cut your saw on a 45 degree angle, and you, once you've got it started, you use the full length of the saw. And just take it easy. Take your time. And I have all the gear you can imagine. I got a chop saw, I got everything. I often find myself using the hand tools because it's just quicker. You know, there's nothing to set up. I don't got to run power cords. I don't got to get my workbench. I'm just using this. We stand on this to hang clothes in the backyard. Right? I'll just hold that so it doesn't break off. Yeah, that one's ready. A little bit of a piece at the end there. A little light sanding on the uh, driveway. Perfect. Good. All right, now we're ready to build a box. The key part of this technique is that you have a two by four and you cut these little blocks, okay? And you want them to be, you know, the height of the boards. All right, these are nailers for putting this together. You don't want to be nailing boards like this end to end together, right? There's just not enough there. So we attach something like this to the end so we can nail them together and get a really good corner. Now, because you're doing this near the end of the wood and you want to get this as flush as you possibly can and as perfect as you possibly can, bearing in mind that it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect, right? Because you're near, working near the end of the, uh, the board here <coughs> and you don't want to split it, it doesn't hurt to have a, you know, to pre-drill. I know it's, you're in a hurry and you just want to get it done, but you paid for the lumber and uh, it's a real shame when it breaks and it doesn't last as long when it cracks. So it's, it's worth it to pre-drill. I'm using uh, one of these. I'd say these are inch and a half number two Robinson decking screws. Pretty much the cheapest, one of the cheaper decking screws you can get. They should hold up just fine. All right, so now it's time to put the whole thing together. I got the nailers onto both of the eight foot pieces. And I've also pre-drilled the end, the four footers at the ends, about two inches in from the edge. 
right? If you do it that, that distance with these dimensions, it'll, it'll be right about in the middle of the 2x4 nailer, this piece here. Now, there's many different ways to, uh, to do this. And of course, it always helps to, uh, to get a hand from someone. <laughs> but uh, if you're doing this by yourself, it, it doesn't hurt to do it on a driveway. If you've got a dra gravel driveway, you've got to put a plank down so you can have a flat working surface. But you just put that on there like that. Get it as flush as you can. And get a screw in there. Push nice and hard. There we go. She's in. Let's do another one here. A lot of people new to using drills, they they do this thing where they don't push hard enough and the thing goes and wears out the bit. And the solution to that is that once you get it started, you push on the back of the drill. Just add some extra, you know, uh, force pushing as you're drilling. All right, so that's pretty good. I'll do the other end and I'll show you the next step. Okay, we got the one side done. Now we just very carefully <laughs> flip her over. Snug it into position. And screw these ones in. So see, it's not really, I mean, it's getting, it's getting a bit windy as it always does around this time of day here. We'll get those in. We'll worry about it being perfectly flush, perfectly square, perfectly level after. Get that one in. Getting pretty cold here. Not easy on the hands. Do the other end. I'm going to show you how to make sure this thing's square. Okay, now we got her all together. Can lay her down flat. It actually went together pretty good. Now I'll show you how to make sure it's square. All right, the trick to ensuring that you, any rectangle you make is square is to do what carpenters call a three, four, five. It's also what a mathematician or anyone in grade eight would call using the Pythagorean theorem, where if you've got one side that is three feet and the other side is four feet, I'm making marks here at three feet and four feet. One side's three feet, the other side's four feet. If you make a diagonal line between those two points, that line should be at five feet. And if it isn't, you just need to adjust a little bit. As long as it's close to five, I mean, these things are never perfect, but you wanna see that it's close to, I'm doing this on the outside edge. So right now, the outside edge of my two marks is exactly five feet. 
if you remember Pythagorean theorem, where the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Fancy way of saying that three squared plus four squared equals five squared, right? Nine plus 16 equals 25, right? If you've got a th three foot side and a four foot side and the diagonal is five feet, uh, or any multiple of three, four, and five, then you've got a right angle. Now the way to preserve uh, that right angle, all you got to do is uh, just slap a couple diagonal pieces at each corner, or one big diagonal piece on the whole thing. I just got little pieces here. This way when I pick it up, it won't trapezoid and lose its shape. Right, so I can get it in the garden, get it, get it positioned, driving a few pegs around it, and uh, that'll keep it from uh, losing its nice geometry. So the reason I slap these two corner pieces on is so I can pick it up and carry it, right? And it won't go all out of whack when I'm walking with it, getting it in a position in the garden and so on. It'll, it'll keep those nice, uh, right angle corners. So there, it was not hard to do. I think if I'm really, really focused, I can slap one of these together in about five or 10 minutes. But yeah, this is not hard to do. Uh, you can use basic tools. You don't, all you need is a drill, some screws, a handsaw, <laughs> clamps, nice. Uh, some inch and a half screws, right? And some lumber, uh, measuring tape, square. Not hard to do, right? So if you're still doing some garden work and you need some new boxes, don't buy them. You don't need to buy blueprints. <laughs> it's a really easy thing to do. Hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. Use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.